instead of saying, you know, maybe we went too far, maybe we need to examine what we do when we are killing innocent people, when we're throwing grenades into babies' cribs. Uh, instead, he says, hey, you're going to want us when the terrorists come. And, and Paul, I ask, uh, when it's the government's policy to terrorize us and intimidate us with things like uh, SWAT raids and militarized vehicles, how do we tell these guys from the terrorists? I mean, they both wear masks. They seem to operate in the same way. It's becoming increasingly difficult, isn't it, David? Yeah. I mean, this arrives in the context of this big ACLU report investigation, which you mentioned before the break, which basically describes the United States as a war zone with the increase in these SWAT team raids, injuries and deaths since 2010 are through the roof. You mentioned before the break, uh, 80,000 SWAT raids per year now. That's actually up from 45,000 in 2005. So mm. in just the course of the last eight years, that mm -hmm. figure has almost doubled. So now you've got this story today, which is out of a, a, a company that provides video training programs for law enforcement. I believe it's run by ex-law enforcement officials. And basically they reference uh, infants like Boo Boo, who was the 18-month toddler critically injured, brain damaged, still in intensive care, after a SWAT team member threw a flashbang grenade into his crib during a raid near Atlanta recently. Of course, they also mentioned ISIS, which is the insurgent group in Iraq that's taken over key towns in Iraq, which, of course, members of which were trained by the U.S. government in Jordan. That's seldom mentioned. Exactly. So in this, in this Facebook post, they say, when this militarization of LEAs, law enforcement agencies, affects infants like Boo Boo, the public's going to be righteously outraged. But someday when ISIS comes a-calling, who will be complaining then? So as you said, they're basically saying that when the terrorists attack, this militarization of police will be necessary, will be needed, and in fact will be called for by the American people. So it's a completely outrageous comment in light of the fact that this poor toddler remains in intensive care, could die from his injuries after this disgraceful SWAT team attack. Um, and they link to the Guardian article about this big ACLU report about how the SWAT teams, the police, are becoming increasingly militarized. And they basically just dismiss it as mm -hmm. necessary in light of ISIS, which is a group that the US government, the Obama administration, was partly responsible for creating through their support of jihadists in Syria. Yeah, exactly. And like this other article that we have from uh, Mikhail Thalen, you've got a regional SWAT team says, uh, we're, not a, we're not a public agency. We don't need to respond to a request for information from the ACLU. I mean, you know, both the SWAT team there as well as ISIS, uh, you know, they're both trained uh, by the government, equipped by the, our government, and they both claim that they don't work for our government, and yet they're using these kind of terrorist tactics. You know, you mentioned, Paul, that uh, this is an organization that tweeted this uh, in the line of duty that trains people and that's really where the problem is coming from it's coming from the people who train them and they're being trained by homeland security to have these kinds of rules of engagement to look at america as a war zone you know out in new mexico when everybody saw that uh, homeless man shot for illegal camping and was outraged uh, they don't really care about that uh, the police in new mexico they have a curriculum in new mexico and the state uh academy for the police a shoot first curriculum they had instructor who resigned because he refused to teach that kind of curriculum and so they look at this as a war zone and that should make us all the more afraid of the fact that they justify these assassinations abroad uh with drones as saying that well it's a war zone we need to understand that they see the entire world as a war zone. So when they put things like uh, the NDAA, where they say the military can indefinitely detain people, uh, they can transport them for torture, whatever, when they put that in and say, well, that's, that's when it's a war zone, we need to understand that they recognize America now as a war zone. Precisely, because... This flashbang tactic, that is a military tactic that was yeah. used against insurgents in Afghanistan and Iraq. It's, it's just like the armored vehicles have been brought home to be used against the American people. That military tactic is now being used against the American people. And in the Guardian article, there are several other examples of where uh, children have been injured and even killed by these flashbang grenade attacks, as it were. So they're using military tactics that were used against terrorists previously. There are even... For example, a mayor in Illinois 
called out a SWAT team to search the house of someone who had poked fun at him on a Twitter account. So they're mm -hmm. using SWAT teams as their little private armies to go after people who merely express dissent. And as he said, they're concerned about transparency. That's why they don't want to release any more details, because there's growing outrage about this. And another new factor is now we've got pro-police state Facebook pages, which solely exist to scoff at real cases of police brutality in an attempt to get these anti-police brutality Facebook pages shut down. So just like, you know, governments hire people to troll websites, to troll comment sections, now there are entire Facebook cliques, groups that go after people who are complaining about police brutality. So again, it shows the, the desperate attempt to cover up this police brutality as its endemic spread begins to dominate social media as more people are becoming aware of it. But we really need to look at all of these quote-unquote non-lethal techniques that they're using against everybody. As you pointed out, you know, the flashbang grenades, the beanbag shotguns that they just killed a uh, World War II vet that was in his 90s with, tasers, where they're tasers people and people are getting permanently brain damaged when they hit the ground or die from that in many cases uh, from a heart attack or from the fall that they have these non-lethal things that are being sold by the military industrial complex to police departments are not non-lethal and they're coming they've got a lot more in the pipeline as you pointed out in uh, recent weeks I think it was you that had the uh, article about the pepper spraying drone yeah, that was my brother, yeah. Yeah. They're building an arsenal. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the guy who trained uh, Fallujah forces, Iraqi soldiers, said that Homeland Security is building a domestic arm army. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support 100% organic coffee infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick, it has really good caffeine in it, it has a good clean wake up that lasts for a long time, doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth, it's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself, I'm telling you. This is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139.